Why is there only nine things? What's she forgotten? Oh my god. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day so far and welcome to today's video where I'm going to be sharing my top 10 products for winter. We've done spring, we've done summer, we've done autumn. It's winter time. Believe it or not, it's winter time. We're going to be talking products that make me feel warm and cozy vibes that heat me up at least five extra degrees that suit me better, that are better suited to these cooler winter months. So if that sounds good to you, keep watching. Okay, so first up, I'm going to talk about products quite new to me. And I picked this up recently specifically for the reason that my favorite product to use on like no makeup, low makeup days, the Shantakai anti-aging skin tint is too deep for me now. Now we're in the winter months. Now I'm like an NC30. That like adds up quite a bit of color to my skin and I can wear it, I can take it down my neck and balance things out or I can mix it, I can use it more as a bronzer or just strategically on my skin, but it's too deep now for me to use all over the face. So I was searching for something that was basically exactly that, that didn't add like a lot of coverage, that was very, very natural, but was lighter in shade to work for me in the winter and I found this bad guy. The Chanel Le Beige Water Fresh tint mine is in the shade medium this stuff is exactly perfectly what I was looking for for the winter months especially you could use this all year round there's no reason why not it's just the color that is especially why I've been loving this for the winter because it ticks all the boxes of the Shantakai. It gives me a smoother, more evened out complexion. It tones down my redness. It balances out, you know, light and shade on my skin and gives me a really beautiful, glowy, luminous, hydrated, fresh, youthful, rested appearance without coverage as such. There's a hint of coverage in here, but it does not like look like at all you're wearing foundation, you're wearing makeup, so you don't have to add concealer, you don't have to then go in with bronzer because otherwise you're like a blank slate. It's just enough to kind of tone everything down, even everything out, beautify, perfect the skin without it being a foundation. It's so beautiful. I love the finish. It feels really caring and hydrating and gentle and light on the skin as well, which is just what you want in winter. If you get a bit dry or you're using, you know, a lot more skincare products and your skin is just feeling a bit parched and dehydrated from like the constant freezing cold to heating to the car heating blowing in your face. It's just really, really nice and gentle on the skin. And I I've been loving it and this is like my go-to. Next up, we're going to talk about a foundation that I feel I will love all year round, but I feel like it's especially suited to the winter months. It's the House Labs foundation. The reason I feel like it's especially suited is because it's a glowy, glowy foundation. And don't get me wrong, the glow for me isn't a seasonal thing, okay? I like to glow all year round, every single day of the week. I'm a glowy lady, it's just my vibe. I love to glow head to toe, you know? <laughs> it's been a while since we had a free poem, but that one was worth the wait. And this is a gorgeous glowy foundation. The thing is in the spring and summer months, glowy, glowy, glowiness is but not without risk, okay? Because you've got probably a high SPF that typically makes everything glowier. You've got the sun shining down, beating upon your face, which again, typically makes everything glowier. Stops foundations wearing so well a lot of the time, can melt things on occasion. But in the winter, you can glow as much as you like safely without fear of retribution, without fear of repercussions. So I am gonna be wearing this <laughs> a lot in the winter months because it gives me everything I love. Gorgeous coverage, skin-like finish, smooth, flattering, long wearing, glowing from the gods without the fear of it sweating off my face because it's freezing, okay? Love it. Next up, let's talk about the lipses. This lip in particular, again, a lipstick I love all year round. This is Lisa Eldridge's Affair 
lipstick. This is a matte and this is the reason why I love this, especially in the winter, because in the summer, mattes, one, I it's just not my vibe for the summer. The summer, spring, I, again, I'm about the glow, the shiny, glossy lip. And don't get me wrong, I still like that in the winter time as well. But I just feel like a matte, especially these velvety, soft, cushiony mattes, they just give me winter vibes. I really feel like they just suit my mood and the weather more in the winter. But this colour... It's just, it's that hot chocolate vibe, but it's a bit cooler tone, so it doesn't feel as autumnal as some of the other lips that I spoke about in my autumn favourites. In my winter favourites, I start to gravitate towards cooler tones. My skin tone is lighter, and I just feel like this has more impact, more oomph in the winter. When I'm tanned, this is like a a pretty everyday like nude on me. In the winter when I'm fairer, it gives me like more impact, more kapow. It just is more, it stands out more, it's more unique because it, there's a bigger contrast between my skin tone and the lipstick and I'm obsessed. It's one of my favorite lipsticks, one of my all time favorite nudes in winter. It's just like stunning. It just pulls everything like this makeup look I did for another video and there's nothing about it that is like, wintry until I put this lip on and I just feel like a oh, winter is here. Give me a hot chocolate and a hot water bottle and I'm happy. Next up, let's talk about wintry eyeshadows. There's two palettes that I want to speak about in this video. The first one, I'm not being funny. Tell me this is not wintry to you. Tell me, don't lie, okay? Don't just try to be different and fib to my face. This is winter in eyeshadow palette form. This is Mothership One, okay? The original, the tone setter, the groundbreaker, if you like. But for goodness sake, the tones in here scream Frosty the Snowman to me. Is that just, just me? It's just so wintry, frosty, cool, freezing is what it is. It reminds me of an English winter's morn. I just wheeze. And I'm not one to like follow rules about when you can or can't wear certain shades. I'll do whatever I like, okay? And so should you. But I will say I never wear this eyeshadow palette in spring and summer. It literally hits like the middle to the end of October, I'm gonna say, and suddenly, I wanna grab this. I wanna grab this palette and this is the vibe I'm feeling. This is all I want to wear. It's the cool quality of it, but also the frosty, icy vibe that it has. It's a stunning palette, of course, it's a mothership. It's stunning, but it is like the winteriest eyeshadow palette that I have. And it just really suits the winter cooler months. I just really, I never feel like using this outside of winter, but come winter, it's all I feel like using. Who knows why, it's a strange little conundrum for the brain. Next, I want to speak about a couple of blushes that I think are stunning all year round, but I myself can only literally wear these in the winter months, really when I'm at my absolute fairest. These are like two of my ultimate, all time favorite blushes. This is Nars's Tempted. <sighs> It took me a long time to find her, but she was worth the wait. Can you see the glow? I'm gonna zoom in in a second, okay, don't panic. The other is Laura Mercier's Chai. <gasps> now this is a matte blush. These two are like bezzy mates. They're maybe cousins, okay? Cousins, I'd say, different mums, not sisters, not twins. Cousins, some kind of maybe one or two times removed, possibly. They see each other at Christmas, maybe a, another holiday, that's about it, you know? So Nars is tempted, Laura Mercier's chai. Now Nars is tempted, it is a peachy shade, but it's a soft, subtle, neutral peach. It's just the glow for me. It's the glow. Chai, obviously a matte from Laura Mercier, bit more neutral, bit more of a sort of neutral, mauvey brown, mauvey neutral, but just both very light, soft, subtle colors. That's a really heavy swatch and they're still quite soft and subtle on my hand. Hence why I can only use both of these blushes 
come winter and I look forward to it. It's one of the best things about winter, pulling out all of the products that really only work on me in my winter skin tone with no sun on the skin to be found for like several months. That's when like these blushes really come into their own because they're a hint of something. And while people think of like peach as like a spring summer shade and it, and it, I, I agree, I understand it. But in winter, this is just a hint of peach so that on the cheeks, it gives you like warmth and just a bit of really natural color, but you can really build it up and not be afraid it's gonna to be too much on my more fair skin in the winter. Same thing goes for chai. This is just the most soft, subtle, beautiful, natural hint of blush on my winter skin tone. It's so easy going. It just adds a hint of something and tones everything down. It doesn't you know, add a lot of color or overwhelm anything very soft and subtle and beautiful. Just depends whether I want a matte or a shimmery sheen. It just really depends how the mood is taking me. But two blushes I can only use in winter and <laughs> I'm excited for it. I guess I feel like maybe I wear more dramatic eye looks in the winter months, like, you know, from the Pat McGrath palette with, you know, more color than I typically would wear the rest of the year. So maybe that's why I'm kind of more drawn to really soft, subtle blush shades. Maybe that's what's going on. Who's to say? Next up, another lip color, also from the queen of lip color, Lisa Eldridge. And this time it's a gloss. Now here's the thing, with winter comes Christmas. They are but soulmates made to live as one. And what that means to me is that it's suddenly like appropriate to wear a red lip, like to put the bins out, you know? No one can argue with you. No one can say anything because it's Christmas time. It's winter time, all right? Between the months of like November to at least January, red lips to put the bins out, red lips on the school run, red lips to the supermarket, red lips while you polish the television. Okay, it's just suddenly the thing because it's, hello, Christmas is coming, so so are the red lips. And Lisa Eldridge's ribbon gloss, oh, get out. She's so flipping gorgeous. I mean, all of Lisa's lipsticks, ribbon, the ribbon matte lipstick, tell me about it. But this gloss, it's just a way to wear the perfect red shade, but it be like wearable daytime, not intimidating. You know, I've kind of talked myself into red lipsticks over the last few years. And Lisa Eldridge, you know, had quite a large hand in doing that for me. But I still find them a bit intimidating at times. I typically save them for like Christmas day and evenings, nights out events. I don't typically rock a red lip just day to day in the daytime, you know, on the school run. I'm not typically seen rocking a red lip, but in the, like the holiday, winter, Christmas season, this gloss, it's a red and it's festive and it makes me feel Christmassy, but it doesn't scare the living bejesus out of me, you know? Because it's wearable, because it's a bit more sheer, it's a bit less intimidating, it's a bit more gentle on the lips because it's that, got that stunning gloss balm hybrid formula from Lisa and it's an absolute staple in my handbag. You know, I'd say November the 20th onwards. Now for the next item, I can only apologize because it's an item that you may never be able to get your hands on. And I know what you're thinking, then why on earth are you including it here, Charlotte? And here's the thing, I chose between you guys like hating my guts and lying to you. I couldn't decide which was worse, okay? And I chose lying to you and I cannot lie to you, even if it means that you hate my guts forever and you never forgive me. I have to tell you, like one of my, absolute, if not my ultimate favorite product for winter. I can't lie to you and not include this, even though it may upset some of you and cause you to swear and call me all kinds of dreadful, terrible names. It's the Natasha Denona five pan that we just can't seem to get anymore. This is number five of, no, it's not. I've lied already. I've lied despite trying not to lie. It's palette number three of her eyeshadow palette five. Do you understand? The five pan, but it's number three of the five pans. <laughs> I'm 
confusing, I'm making it worse. I've spoken about this before, I try not to speak about it too often because I don't understand what's happened to it. I think it's been discontinued, I don't know. There are some of her five pans still kind of lying about the place, but here's my excuse. I feel like if I stop talking about this, there's no chance of it coming back. If we keep talking about it and we all keep begging Natasha to bring it back, bring it back, and we keep on hyping it up for what it deserves, maybe she might hear us. That's my excuse, but I just can't lie to you. This is my number one makeup product for winter, I think. I'm obsessed with it. I try not to wear it in my videos. I try not to talk about it too much because I know it's so annoying and lots of you would love to get your hands on it and you just cannot, Natasha. But I would not be being honest to you guys if I talked about like my top 10 products for winter and I just failed to mention this because it's probably, like I said, it's my number one. I'm just flabbergasted. My flabber is gasted by this palette. It is absolutely delightful. There's nothing like it. I've tried, I've looked. Just tell me about it. I mean, again, it's just winter in eyeshadow quint form. What more could you want than that? She's glorious. I so wish this would come back and be you know, easier to find and we could all have her. That's my Christmas wish. If we're gonna have a Christmas miracle this year, let it be that Eyeshadow Palette 3 comes back into stock. Somehow we can all get it because we all deserve her. She's absolutely ridiculously gorgeous. And there's just nothing like it. Believe me, I've looked. I've gone through my select my palette selection. I've looked online. There's nothing quite as perfect as this, the colour story, the formulas, the finishes, how everything goes together, the iciness, the smokiness, it just covers all bases of winter and she's absolutely flipping glorious. So I'm so sorry for rubbing her right in your faces yet again, but I'd rather do that than lie. And I can't lie, for me, this is like the winter palette. For goodness sakes, Natasha, how do we start like a a petition. How do we do that? Someone start a petition. Let's tell Natasha, give it back. Give it to us, all right? I don't want to have to come over there. I don't know where there is, but I'm coming. Next up, a highlight that is one of the loves of my life when it comes to highlight, but I recently discovered that I prefer this when I'm not tanned. In summer, I find this a bit too light and it starts to lose. It's just like melt into the skin quality which is what makes me obsessed with it it's the pat mcgrath divine rose highlighter this 100 percent suits my winter skin tone more than it does my summer once i start to lose my tan she starts to become my holy grail again i think in in the summer i picked up a couple of highlights that i was like mm, do you know what? i think i prefer this one, so like the Chanel, uh, Rev de Camellia, the Hermes, a few started to like kind of edge this one out in what I was choosing. But then when winter came back, she came back on form because just look at that stunning, like it doesn't look like I've got any makeup here. It just looks like my hand is suddenly gloriously luminous. Stunning, beautiful, smooth, wet looking glow with no colour on the skin. <gasps> Perfection. The issue in summer is that this does give a bit of a colour on my skin when I'm more tan, but as soon as that tan starts to go, she starts to glow for the show. We're going to work on that one. I mean, she's just utterly divine, glorious, stunning. It just looks like my hand is gloriously glowy, almost wet. It's amazing. She's glorious, is what I'm saying. And again, I feel terrible that I've neglected her throughout the warmer months. I don't know what I was thinking. I just felt like I stopped loving it as much as I did. And that's what it was. I was tanned. It wasn't quite working the same way as subtly as she does in the winter, but we're gonna be best friends again, okay? I promise, I'm so sorry. 
And lastly, just like in my previous videos, I wanted to include a fragrance, a perfume that summarizes, that epitomizes winter to me. And it's Dior's Tobacalore. Even the name, Tobacalore. Calm down. This is a fragrance that I definitely, it was a grower, okay? It, had, it took its time to grow on me. When I first bought this, I was like, mm, I like it. I like it. It's quite terrifying. It's very, very pungent, potent, strong, intense in your face. It's quite hard hitting. It feels like when you spray this, by the way, spray like two sprays, three, if you want people to stay 10 feet away from you at all times, which often I do, I choose three. This is a beast of a fragrance. You have to love tobacco in fragrance. You can't be like, oh, you know, I like a hint of tobacco, but I don't really want to smell it in my fragrance. You have to like a tobacco heavy fragrance, smoky, smells like you're literally on fire. You know, that's what I'm talking about here. This is a strong, intense, powerful, tobacco heavy woodsy scent this is one i just love to wear when i'm not leaving the house in the winter i swear if i spray this on myself i instantly heat up like maybe seven or eight degrees my internal body temperature quite literally rises and i no longer need to wear my coat indoors when i have sprayed this on me it's so warming it's so cozy it's you can smell it on yourself all day it's very strong it's very potent the performance is amazing initially this was like a bit too much for me i felt like it was a bit too masculine although almost all the fragrances that i wear are masculine leaning this is like a whole other category it's very very strong musky woodsy you get it you get what i'm saying so it took me a while to get used to it for a while especially in the sort of spring summer months it's just too much but when winter hits suddenly I want to start wearing it and it's just warming and cozying me like a lovely cuddle from a really strong, beautiful, powerful, handsome man who at some point has been on fire, you know? <laughs> Maybe this is what like Damon Salvatore smells like or Silas. Probably this is what Silas wears. I'm 100% sure of it. It's a warm, cuddle, cozy, snuggly, fiery blanket there. Okay, so there you have it. Those are my top 10 products for winter. My winter loves, my winter recommendations. I can only apologize wholeheartedly for the inclusion of the five pan. I just, I just want to fish. I just want to make an official statement that I understand if you hate me. But please just let that last until the next video and then say all is forgiven, okay? Please say all is forgiven, please. <laughs> if you're still talking to me, please let me know what your favorite winter products are. If it helps you, tell me about some amazing ones that you know are discontinued and then we'll call it even, okay? I can't cope with, I can't live with the guilt of this, okay? <laughs> I, need, I need to balance it out. I need us to make it even. Call it even, okay? <laughs> I'm never being able to sleep tonight. What have I done? Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'd love to see you in the next one. Otherwise, take care for now. Bye-bye-bye-bye.